Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's Facebook Live. My name's Craig. I'm from mansioningles.com and also the podcast inglespodcast.com. And with me this week is Lynn. Hi, from Craig. Put it like this. <laughs> Hi, how are you doing? I'm fine, thanks. And you? Yeah, I'm doing well, thank you. Uh -huh. Lynn has a wonderful site, Put It Like This, which has tailor-made courses of private teaching where you can get exam preparation, job interview practice, work presentations, business English, meetings online, anything you'd like to do with your English, Lynn is the person to see about that and we'll speak about that a little more later. But Lynn, uh, what are we doing this week? What are we speaking yeah, about? This week we're talking about homes, about our homes, um, a place called home, <laughs> which um, I suppose probably lots of our students have got the vocabulary already for home because it's quite a, a common topic, isn't it, to talk about your home. But it's something that we always talk about. So if you meet new people, you know, usually they always say, oh, where are you from and where do you live and what's it like? And and so it's kind of like a, it's a general topic that often crops up in small talk, doesn't it? That's right. And because it's a general topic, the idea this week is we, we're going to look at some vocabulary, some useful vocabulary that you could use to speak about where you live and your home and then hopefully – after we've spoken a little about where we live, you would come on and join us and speak a little about your home, where you live, and maybe things you'd like to change, the good things and the bad things about where you live. So that's mm -hmm. the idea for today. And but I start... do hope, can I say, I do hope that you get some confidence and you come and tell us about your homes. Because yes. this, is, this is really, for me, it's really, really interesting. I mean, first of all, in this class, we're here in Valencia. And many of you are from all over in the world. And I think it's fascinating to think that we're all actually listening to each other from different homes. And I'm interested to know where you live and what the places are like where you live. That's really exciting. Yes, we are generally very, very interested mm -hmm. in where you live and if you're living a house, if you live in a flat or an apartment. And let's say hello to people who are joining us from all over the world. There's Yabar. Hello. Greetings from Mexico, says Yabar. So there we go, uh -huh. Mexico, the other side of the world already. Hema's uh -huh. here. Thank you, Hema, for joining again. I think Norma. Yabba's been here too before, I remember. Yeah, um, Yabba, Yabba's here Norma most too. weeks. And Norma too, yeah. Hi, Norma, from Mexico Hi, Norma. too. Mm -hmm. And Katy, hello. Uh-huh, great. Hi. I don't know where Katy's from. Katy Martinez, she hasn't Katy, where are you from? Uh -huh. Where do you live? And, to and Tony's here. Hello, hello, Tony. Welcome. And if you're watching Hi. the replay on Facebook Live, thank you for spending time with us and watching the replay. Mm -hmm. So let's begin with some vocabulary, Lynn. What do you think? Yes. Okay. Go ahead. So maybe we should start. Should we start with the places that we live in? Where do we actually live? Uh -huh. Something basic, perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> A flat so and an apartment. Uh huh. So what is there to say about a flat and an apartment? Well, well, one, oh, sorry. <laughs> go on, no, go ahead, go on. You tell me, no, what is there was, to say about a flat and an apartment? <laughs> I, was going to, I was going to say something fairly obvious, that one word is used more in British English and one word is used more in American English. Mm -hmm. And do you know which is which? Flat is used more in British English. And apartment is more common in American English. And, of course, flats are together in one building. And if you live in a flat, you probably live in a block of flats, a block of flats. But apartments are together in an apartment building. So mm -hmm. try and remember that distinction. Block of flats, apartment building. And mm -hmm. I live in a flat in a block of flats. But you don't, do you, Lynn? I'm not sure, really. I think I do. <laughs> you, live, you live in a flat? I live in a flat. Yes, I do. But um, I live in a ground floor flat and I have my own door. So it's a bit it's a bit weird. But I actually do belong uh, in a block of flats, but I don't have my entrance isn't quite in the same uh in the in the central entrance of, of normal blocks of flats yeah that shows how bad my memory is because i have been to your house or your, you your flat house, once did you? Did you think and i, I remember <laughs> i remember it being like standing 
alone by itself. I don't remember mm. it being in a block. No, okay. it's in a block of flats. We have six floors in my in my building. Mm -hmm. There you go. But uh, I think it's deceiving because you actually come in an outside door, which is unusual for a block of flats, and it's not a shared door. So that's uh, that gives. And is that it impression. in a in a because on the ground floor? It's the mm -hmm. ground floor, which is usually the bottom where the lift or the elevator stops. Yes. In America, is that the first floor? Do they call it the first floor Ooh. in America? I think they I don't know. do. I, don't I think know. I remember I uh -huh. that the gr they don't have like a ground floor. I think yeah, that's they call what it, they, they say basement and then first floor. The first floor. I think you're right. You're right. Uh huh. So basement is actually below the first floor. Uh -huh. So you're kind of underground level if you have a basement flat. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah, that's flat and apartment. And there is actually another word, which I didn't actually <laughs> prepare with you, Craig, but maybe we can do it spontaneously. I think in America, they, they talk about blocks of flats being, or blocks of apart or building, apartment buildings. Sometimes I've heard the word condominium. Have you heard that? In I have, media. but I'm not sure exactly what a condominium is. I think it's like a, a, a group of apartment buildings. Let's you know? Google it. Yeah, will you Google that? Okay. Right. Hema says she also lives in a flat. That's great. Alejandro's joined us from El Salvador. Fabiana from Argentina and Hernando from Colombia and Dahlia from Peru. Okay. So we've got lots of different places. So do you guys all live in flats in these countries? Or is it typical to live in houses? Oh, you found condominium, Craig? Yeah, yeah. According, according to Mr. Google, a condominium is a large property complex divided into individual units mm -hmm. and sold. Ah. Ownership usually includes non-exclusive interest in certain community property. So it's, it's individual units in a property complex, not necessarily a block of flats. Uh -huh. So it's maybe it's maybe like we have in Spain. There's quite a, the, there's it's kind of like a new newer concept now that when they actually build new blocks of flats, they maybe build six or seven buildings together, and yeah. then those buildings they share some common facilities like a pool or a gymnasium or. Uh, or some green area where they can sit, but it's actually closed off from the street. So it's it, the the the, commu the the group of buildings is 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 not accessible by strangers, only yeah. by people who live in that group of buildings. It's more is like a right? closed. Like yeah, that, I agree. It's more like a yeah. closed community with usually. Mm -hmm. Uh, a caretaker or a doorman in charge of the whole complex, yes. yes. Uh -huh. So that would maybe be the condominium. But we don't use that word in British English, do we? But I have heard it in American English, yeah. And sometimes they just say condo, a condo. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and six, I think I think yes. sorry, <laughs> but I think the reason we don't have it in British English is because I can see lots we, of people here are saying they live in houses, and of course in Britain it's very common to live actually in houses. Only in the very very big cities are, are people now beginning to live in a, in blocks of flats. But the tradition in Britain is actually to live in houses. Yeah. Um, yeah. So sorry, Craig. I so, know. no, 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 fine. So right. sixth floor, we, we said before on the ground floor, notice the preposition on because you're using your um, ordinal numbers to count the floor. So first floor, second floor, third floor, and the preposition is on. So I live on the third floor, on the fifth floor. Sixth Floor is really difficult to say because you have to change your mouth position. Six, and then the tongue comes out to make the TH sound th. So sixth floor. Practice that. It's quite difficult. Sixth floor. Mm -hmm. And we spoke about basement flat. Now, attic and penthouse, what's the difference? Because attic is not attico, really, is it? It's not a direct translation into Spanish. No, it isn't. Uh, attic really is the space underneath the roof 
But in British English, I think we often use the space under the roof, not to live, but to store things that we don't want in our houses anymore. <laughs> it's kind of like a garage, you know, where you put all your, you dump all your old books and your, your old furniture and the things you don't want in your house anymore. It's that space underneath the roof when the roof is often pointy and there's kind of like storage space. People... We in Britain, uh, uh, when I lived in Britain, we used to always keep the Christmas tree in the attic. Yes, and all the, the lights, the decorations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the camping equipment, because you only used it once a year, camping equipment in the summer and the Christmas tree at Christmas. So the attic was really a storage space. Yeah. Um, and a penthouse really is a place to live, isn't it? Which is underneath the roof. Would you say that? Yeah, and they're usually quite luxurious. A penthouse has the implication of something with maybe a balcony, beautiful view, the more expensive floor of the apartment building. Mm -hmm. So penthouse, I think, is a is a pretty good translation to what you would say atico in Spanish. Mm -hmm. Un atico usually is a little bit more expensive. It has maybe a skylight where the light and the sun can come through, and it's quite luxurious, and that in English would be a penthouse apartment or a penthouse flat. Yeah, so if you want to show off to people, you don't say, I live in an attic, because that makes <laughs> no. you sound like, like you're the, you can't afford to live in a house. So somebody's given you a space in a dusty, in a dusty storeroom. So you don't say, I live in the attic. But if you say, I live in the penthouse, that, that's very impressive. No. <laughs> quite, quite, quite a few people watching living houses, which surprises me, because in Spain, it's yeah. more normal to live in a flat norma lives in a house yeah and tony lives in a house not an apartment or a flat yeah and there was quite a few people before but the chat's gone up um norma sylvia uh-huh uh they all live in houses dahlia too uh-huh yeah so it, it depends on the country what kind of housing what the housing is like and i saw that there was somebody from new zealand who is actually now living in mauro yeah kia ora. Uh -huh. and i know new zealand because my family live in new zealand now and um and i and i know that in new zealand blocks of flats and apartment buildings are very rare because they're only really in the big cities and nearly everybody in new zealand lives in a house uh -huh. yeah yeah that's my so, favorite uh, one of my favorite countries new zealand i love new mm -hmm. zealand mm -hmm. Okay, so where are we with our... Oh, yeah, we were speaking about lifts and elevator. Again, American English, British English. Lift is more British English and elevator used more in American English. Although it's quite interchangeable. If you say elevator, then British a British person will know what you mean and vice mm. versa. Mm. So mm. you could describe where you live as with or without a lift. For example, I live on the fourth floor in a flat and the block of flats has a lift we mm -hmm. have a lift um sorry i'm just going to ask uh, reply to eva because eva says i live in the last floor is it a penthouse and uh, no <laughs> possibly not um first of all eva if the floors are very regular um remember that craig said we when we talk about floors we say we live on the floor because you think of that preposition on means on top of. In is you are inside something. So you live in the building or in the flat, but you live on the floor because there are different levels of the building. And if you if the if the top, I mean you might live in a penthouse, I don't know, but a penthouse is usually more luxurious than the yeah. other floors, but if the floors are very regular and you live on the last one, then what you do is you say, I live on the top floor, right? But the, the penthouse is a very special floor because it implies that you maybe have more space or maybe you have big terraces that nobody else in the building has. Um, is that right? Would you agree, Craig? Absolutely, yeah. yeah There's a difference definitely. between the top floor and the penthouse. Right? Yeah, so if it's, if it's not a particularly luxurious floor, flat if it's pretty much the same as the other flats in the building then you'd say i live on the top floor i live on the top mm -hmm. floor mm -hmm. yabber says that in mexico it's not common to have an attic we use a small room to store things yeah mm -hmm. 
yeah, which is pretty much what an attic is, really. It's just that the roof, a place uh -huh. to store things. Mm -hmm. I think it depends oh. on the buildings too, because of course a lot of buildings don't have those gable roofs; they have flat roofs. So if you have flat roofs, you can't. There's no, you don't there's have no an room. Attic. Uh huh. Yeah, you don't. Absolutely. Have an attic. Uh -huh. Oh, Ava um, says she lives on the top floor, not in the penthouse. So she's told <laughs> us. <laughs> I'm sure it's very nice, though, even if it's not a penthouse. Uh huh. When I lived in the UK, we had a house and it had a porch. There mm -hmm. were two doors that you went into, two front doors. So you opened the first door and there was a glass porch, quite small. And then you opened a second door to go inside of the house. So the porch in the UK is often a very, very small space separating two doors to entrance doors however in the u.s and correct me if you if you think this is not ex accurate lynn mm, it's generally like a wooden platform where you yeah. usually have a rocking chair mm -hmm. and maybe there's a um a place to lean on and mm -hmm. have a coffee we or call, smoke a cigarette in in britain we would call that a veranda yes yeah a veranda. But in actual fact we don't have them in britain no, we don't have verandas. It's very Spanish. I think it's because it, the word must come from Spanish, no? Veranda, or yeah. it sounds Spanish to me. Mm -hmm. But it's 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 like a it's an area around the house which is covered with with maybe the roof or something, so it's protected from the rain. But mm -hmm. it it surrounds the entire house or, or part of the house. But a porch is just for the door. Now, are you going to tell everybody, Craig, or do you know why in Britain we have porches? Is it for the I weather think? to protect? <laughs> is it to protect the of course. the wind from the you wind? Always take your wet things off. That's in right. The porch. In the, you, you leave your boots, your muddy boots. You leave boots. your shoes. You leave your wet coats. You leave your umbrella. You yes. leave it all in the porch. And I yes. think it's probably practical because in Britain, most houses have fitted carpet everywhere, don't they? Mm -hmm. And of course, if you, it's not like in Spain. In Spain, we have like ceramic floors or wooden floors. But in, in Britain, we tend to have carpets everywhere. And of course, when it rains, and it rains a lot, of course, in England, <laughs> then if you walk straight into the house with your wet things and your muddy boots, you're going to make a mess on the carpet. So yeah. I know that in Sunderland, which is where I was from, um, everybody used to have porches, and it was actually to protect the carpets <laughs> in the house. <laughs> and I've just right? checked on. I've just checked in the dictionary, and I was correct. It they, they give two definitions for a porch, uh -huh. and in Spanish, porcha, porche. Uh -huh. uh, one is a raised outside platform, which be the which will be like you said, Lynn, the veranda, mm -hmm. probably more associated with American, American English, English. Uh -huh. and a covered entryway, which is what mm -hmm. you were describing in the mm -hmm. in the UK to um, to leave your umbrella and your muddy boots uh -huh. in the porch. Uh -huh. Okay, interesting. Bungalow. Bungalow. <laughs> which. Which you kind of say in Spanish with a slightly different pronunciation, bungalow, but it's not uh -huh. the same thing. It's not uh -huh. the same thing. A bungalow in, in English is a living, a house, a place where you live on one level. So a bungalow does not have an upstairs part. There are no stairs going up to bedrooms. It's just mm. on one level. That's a bungalow. And there's no cellar. There's no cellar either. And there's no cellar underneath right. the house it's completely on one level mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. hi Sergio Sergio says he lives in a an, an apartment I think you mean Sergio an apartment on the second floor well done with that preposition in Buenos Aires in the city of Buenos Aires nice mm -hmm. to meet you too mm -hmm. okay next one uh, we've got veranda in there, Lynn. <laughs> oh, great. Well, we've already done that, yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, we've got a lot of words here. Uh, garden. I'm sure everybody knows what the garden is, the garden where the flowers are and the grass and the lawn. Um, of, co of course, we have front gardens and back gardens mm -hmm. in the UK, front yeah. garden and back garden. Mm -hmm. And we have a terrace. And a terrace is usually... Um, uh, an area that is paved. 
So it hasn't got grass on it or soil or earth, but it, it has maybe ceramic tiles on it or it might be um, wooden. It could be, I suppose, it could be a kind of... Um, but it's an area where you can sit and maybe like, like an extra seating area. Usually terraces are connected in some way with the living room doors, aren't they? The, mm -hmm. the, the windows that you open out from your living room and then you can go and sit on the terrace and maybe enjoy something to eat or en enjoy something to drink. Yeah, that yeah. would be the terrace. And um, yeah, terrace. And then balcony is, of course, if you are on in an apartment block, and then, of course, you haven't got a, a terrace to go out onto, so you, you haven't got a garden, for example, but you have this, this structure that's added on the side of the building, so you can walk out of your living room, and you have a small area where you can overlook the rest of the street, and you can sit out there too. Veranda, we've talked about. It's the area that's usually around a house, right? Not on a, on a block of flats. In American English, they don't say garden. They, my, my friend in America always talks about her yard. Yes, her backyard. That? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Her backyard, yeah. Uh -huh. and, um, and, but the backyard in English is something different. Did you have any backyards in houses where you lived in England, Craig? You no, lived we... in the south of England, didn't you? I lived in the suburb. I grew up in the suburbs of London and uh -huh. we didn't really have backyards. We had back gardens. Yeah, back so gardens. I'm, it, it sounds like something with no flowers, a bit depressing, maybe with no grass and just, right. as you said, paved, just, just concrete. Paved. And usually backyards are from a very, it's, it's quite an old type of housing which exists in England and they are called tourist houses. So you've got the word tourist there, but it's a different meaning of a uh, of, of tur tourist with a D on the end. Yeah, we've got and it here, tourist. Uh, tourist houses is a row of houses. Maybe there might be 20, yeah? And they are all joined together. So mm -hmm. their, their walls are all, are all connected. They're all connected. They have possibly a front garden or a very small garden at the big, at the front with a gate, and everybody had their own front door. So you go in through your own gate, you might have a little garden, and you have a porch, and then you go into the house. But at the back of the house, the back of the house was brick walls separating you from your neighbour that are quite high, mm -hmm. and the area was always paved, as, 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 as you said, Craig, there was no garden, there was no... And in that area, people used to do things like dry their clothes, and it was all hidden from view. So you didn't see your, 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 your neighbor's clothes being dried, but you had a very private area with very high walls, but it was just for you. And, and, and that kind of housing still exists a lot in, in the older industrial cities of Britain. I think, I mean, it used to exist in London, but a lot of that, that housing has been removed now in order to build blocks of flats. But in the Midlands, the north of England and Scotland, you can still, and in Wales too, you'll still see a lot of that old housing, which mm -hmm. uh, is actually very nice. It's, it's very nice housing. Sometimes the rooms are very big and have very high ceilings and they're very nice, but they often have backyards and that's British English backyard. Reiner is in the chat room from Germany and he uh -huh. says, ah, Reinhauser. Is that Reinhauser? Is that terraced? <laughs> I don't know. Do you know that word? Yes, yes I do. Because Reinhauser. I so Reinhauser in German is terraced houses. There and I go. think Reiner has also said, is a porch close to the floor in Germany? But not really, because the floor is inside the house. And this porch is a little construction which is added to the front door. And it Isn't usually it? has a, a plant, doesn't it? It oh, has yeah. a plant yeah. so that as you go into the house, there's a, a green plant there in the in uh, the porch. And if you're unlucky, there might be a dog barking at you to, yeah, to warn was, you not to go in. <laughs> there was in, in our house. Now, we lived in a house. It wasn't terraced. It wasn't our house wasn't joined on both sides, but it was joined on one side. So if you can imagine the roof like this and then 
cut down the middle and we lived on the left and our neighbors lived on the right, that's called semi-detached because it's detached on one side. And of course, if a house is detached, then it's completely by itself. It's not joined to anything. It's detached. It's on its own. Mm -hmm. So those three types of houses exist in the UK, detached, terraced, completely joined, or semi-detached, which is attached on one side. Mm -hmm. So where do you live? We would like you to come in soon or now, if you like, and speak about where you live, describe your house and practice some of this vocabulary. I'm posting a link in the chat room. So if you follow that link, you're welcome to come in and practice your English and speak to us and tell us about your house. Um, Brazil. Luza says, could you talk about corridor and hall? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Luza. Do you want That's to do that, Lynn, or shall I? <laughs> <laughs> I can do that one if you like. Okay, so that's, I think, I think I would say a hall is something that we actually have in our houses. Uh, the hall is, uh, uh, sometimes it's called a passageway in British English too, in the passage, we used to call it the passage in the north of England. And a hall is basically an area of the house where you have all the doors leading off to different rooms. So you often have... Um, a hall, if you have a, a house that's on two stories, you would have a little hall downstairs in front of the front door and maybe leading off the hall, there you would go into the living room and maybe into the kitchen. And then you'll have a staircase. And on the next floor, you would also have a hall or an area from which the, the doors lead off to other, other areas of the house. Now a, now, a hall could be long and rectangular or a hall could be square or a hall could be circular but when we talk about a corridor we have a very fixed image or i do would you agree uh, craig of a mm -hmm. very long rectangular um it's it's a vision of a long rectangular area and quite frankly i would tend to use the word corridor for buildings of like the town hall a, a or hospital a school or a hospital School. where you have a very, very long rectangular area and then it leads off to offices or it leads off to classrooms or it leads off to hospital rooms. Uh, yeah. yeah. Would you say that? Absolutely. I'll add one more thing to what Lynn said mm -hmm. is that apart from that description that Lynn said about a domestic hall in your house leading to the kitchen or the lounge or the bedroom, you can also have collocations with hall because you can play basketball in a sports hall or you can go to a concert in a concert hall. So mm -hmm. it does have a bigger, you can have really big halls and it tends to go with collocation with something. So concert hall and sports hall are two examples. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Hope that okay. helps. Uh -huh. If you have any more questions, you know what to do. Yeah. Put them in the chat room. We'll try to yeah, get more. to them soon. Ramona has one and says, how would you say Mirador? It's a covered balcony, but with its own entity. Its own entity. I think it means it's on its own. When I see Mirador, I think of viewpoint, but yeah. that's more outside when uh -huh. there's like a valley and you're up high and it's outside. I wouldn't use viewpoint for you know, a house. I think that might be, Craig. Can you, can you know in Valencia, there are some very, very old, beautiful houses on Calle La Paz. Mm -hmm. And they almost have a room. As the, the, <laughs> the, the outside of the building, they're often on the corners. Do you know what I mean? They're on the corners of these beautiful old state buildings. And they have this glass that goes around them. Yeah from the floor to the ceiling and behind them you can see that the house uh, it's not really a balcony as such because you can't look out but it's all glass covered in and people use it as an extra kind of room maybe that's what Ramona is describing according uh, to the dictionary it says as I said before a lookout a viewpoint a vantage point but there's mm -hmm. another definition which is what you're describing Lynn which and, we have, don't we? Which is sunroom. When it's like 
they or say bay, window. bay window or enclosed balcony mm -hmm, mm -hmm. also so i think that's the meaning uh -huh. that a bay window is a beautifully big window with glass all the way up where it's kind of quite pleasant to sit in and maybe it's actually separated by doors to the rest of your house but it's not like an open balcony it's not something that you can hang over uh, no. You can't stand on the end and say, Romeo, Romeo. <laughs> Wherefore out there, Romeo? <laughs> you, can't do, you can't do Shakespearean love stories. No, it doesn't go well. And ever, no, a corridor would not be used for a house. A corridor would be, as we said, in a hospital or a school, perhaps. We would say hall, H-A-L-L, -L, in a house, definitely. Mm -hmm. Okay, where were we? I'm lost now with the vocabulary. Where were we? we? Now we're talking about rooms in the house now, I think. Rooms right? in the house. Mm -hmm. Why don't you write in the chat room all the rooms you can think of in a house, all the different types of rooms, and see if you can and name. We'll see, uh, we'll see if we have any that you don't know. <laughs> so what rooms can you think of? in the house mm -hmm. right write them in the, in the chat room as quickly as possible what rooms are there in a house we said some before if you were listening carefully mm -hmm. in the meantime ligia ale is saying how do you say terraza this is on the last floor of a building the terraza is a spanish word quite that's quite right that's like the the big uh I think we say terrace on the top of the building too. I would say terrace. Yeah, you? sun sun terrace. I would say a sun terrace. Uh -huh. Sun terrace. Uh huh. Yeah, sun terrace. Mm -hmm. Remember, you're welcome to jump in and join us in the conversation mm -hmm. if you would like to. Come on, you know where where are, where are we sitting? Where are Craig and I sitting at the moment? We're in separate houses. Ah, here we are, Felipe. Good, good, Felipe. Kitchen. Living room, dinner room, mm. Mm, dining room, dining Di room, Felipe. Dining room. That's Bathroom. Bathroom, that's good. Mm -hmm. Any more? Any more? Sergio's asking, how do you say a part hotel? And I think we just say uh, self catering. Do we say apartment hotel? Apartment hotel, I think they say. That's a hotel where you have like self contained units. In America, they would call it a motel, I think, wouldn't they? Yeah, motel probably, but that's with your car though. Tony yeah. says dining room, kitchen, and bedroom. Very good. Bedroom. Excellent. But where is Craig and where am I? I'm yeah. not in my bedroom. We're not in the I'm bathroom. Like no, we're not in the bathroom. <laughs> Where are we? <laughs> toilet? No, I'm not in the toilet either. <laughs> <laughs> not, not yet. I'm sure you didn't mean that. It was just there was a delay on the, on the, on the, on the chat. <laughs> living room? No, this is not my living room. Uh, maybe. Okay, I, let's, let, got, let's show them. There. Look there. I've got books. You've got you're books. In the, you're in the library. You're in the, the uh, study. study. Nearly, Felipe. Just without the room in the study mm -hmm. that's it so so living room is usually where the sofa and the television is and where you relax and read dining room where you eat where you dine the verb to dine is to to eat um master bedroom the very big bedroom the main bedroom in the house an ensuite bedroom has the toilet and sink and shower connected to the bedroom so it's usually separated by a door you walk in to the bathroom pantry i have never had a pantry it's where you keep the food isn't it it is it's a fantastic thing if you have a pantry i've always it's... wanted a pantry but i haven't got one <laughs> so it's and like is it connected to the kitchen it's usually connected to the kitchen and it's a cold storage room it's a room oh. where it's quite cold so it hasn't got a window doesn't have a heater and uh, you can actually store food in there, a pantry. It's like a walk-in wardrobe for the kitchen. There you are. Right. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever had a walk-in wardrobe? No. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> no, no, I haven't. No. Now, no. several people are, are, are trying to guess where we are. They think, Craig, they think you're in the living room. I'll leave you to 
to answer that. But I'm actually in a study. I'm in my study. Or somebody also said the office. Lydia said the office, and that's right. You can call this room where you work. This is the room where I do I work. I work from home. And this room where I work is my study or my office. Mm -hmm. And where are you, Craig? I'm not going to tell you yet because we're going to speak okay. about our houses later and then okay. when we've when we've introduced some vocabulary and then encourage you to come in with us and join us and speak about your houses and where you live. So I will tell you in in about 5 or 10 minutes where okay. where I am and where I live. Uh -huh. But let's continue with a few more words before we discuss some questions. Now most people in Spain, if you live in a flat or an apartment, you, you live in the city or at least in a big town. Um, but there are other places where you could live. You could live outside the city centre in the suburbs, in the suburbs, Las Afueras, or in the country or in the countryside or in the centre of town, in the centre of the city. And in American English, you would say downtown. Downtown in American English is the city centre or in a particular neighborhood. So you would name the neighborhood where you live. A neighborhood in Spanish is barrio. Mm -hmm. What about these words, Lynn? All right, so often when you describe where you live, you usually describe what the advantages are. And sometimes, People want to know, if you're looking for a place to live, what are the amenities like, the local amenities? And the word amenities means what advantages are there to living where you live? So examples of amenities are things that make your life easier. So, for example, if you have shops that are nearby, nearby shops, right, that's a good amenity. If you have schools nearby, if you have children, of course, that's great if they can walk to school and you don't have to take them by car medical practices, doctor's practices, clinics, okay, those kind of things are amenities. Parks and playgrounds, especially if you have, uh, well, parks for everybody, because if you've got parks, you can do sports, you can do exercise, you can go for walks, you can walk your dog. And if you have playgrounds nearby, of course, your kids can play on the playground. Open spaces, all right. So all of those things are kind of like your local amenities. If you're lucky enough to live in an area that has a lot of local amenities, then you're living in a nice place, usually, I think. Mm -hmm. Is that all right, Absolutely. Craig? Have you got anything yep. to add? No, 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 that's perfect. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Somebody's it, asking what the difference is between a flat and an apartment. Yeah, uh, I just answered that in the chat. We said that great. before. Flat British English, apartment American ah, English. Thank you. Sorry, Craig. Yeah, great. So you could um, live in a place where there are no trains, no buses, and it's really difficult to get into the center of the city. Then you are not well connected. We don't say well communicated. That's a mistranslation from Spanish. You say bien comunicado, it's well connected in English. So if you have good public transport from your house to the center of the city or to where you work, then you live in a well connected place. And obviously easy parking, you need a place to park your car, which is a problem in some neighborhoods here in Valencia. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Yabir would like to join us, I think, Craig. I don't know if you can see that. He's asking to join us. Yabir. Okay, yeah, but I'll put the link again in the chat room. This is the link you need for your browser. If you just follow this link, it works well with, um, with Google Chrome. Just click that and I will, should see you here and I'll be able to bring you into the stream with us so, so that you'll be live with Lynn and Craig. All right. In the meantime, Luther and a couple of other people are asking, is am amenities the same as facilities, Craig? Um, I would facility, that's a good question. Facilities. Amenities will be the services in your local area that make it a pleasant place to live, as you've said. Mm -hmm. And facilities, wouldn't that be more like the installations inside the building? Like if you have a washing machine room or mm -hmm. um, central heating, 
yeah things like I that think so too. i think so too so the facilities are more like installations mm -hmm. and the amenities are services i think more i think that's a good uh, a good definition there yeah uh -huh. okay. so you could live in a noisy area and you can have noisy neighbors of course you can live in a busy area if you live near a market it's probably very busy or you could live in a quiet peaceful neighborhood with not much noise and that's true if you live outside the city in the countryside for example you can have a fast pace of life where um, for example in if you live in manhattan in new york that's a very fast pace of life but if you live in a village in spain somewhere very remote then things go a lot more slowly so you have a slow pace of life especially if you live in the country mm -hmm. so those are a few words for you now we'd like to ask you a question we'll help you speaking about our places where we live and then we'd like you to jump in using that link and tell us about where you live so describe where you live and join us on facebook live lynn do you want to start with with a description of your your Am house and your well, area your neighborhood is it okay, do you have a well, fast pace of life where you are um, uh, Yabia says, can you share the link again, please, Craig? Yeah, sure. Right the last away. one was a YouTube link. I yeah. Think. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So I live in, you know, that uh, Craig and I both are living in Valencia at the moment in, uh, in Spain. And um, I actually don't live in the center of Valencia. I live in the suburbs. Um, it's not very far from Valencia. Valencia is not a very big city. So um, I only live about four kilometers from the center. And the place where I live, it's quite a new neighborhood and it's very well connected with public transport. So I can catch a, a tram, I can catch metro to go anywhere I want to in Valencia. So I really like that uh, because it's, it's well connected with the city. But the advantage of living in the suburbs is that the pace of life is a little bit slower. There's not so much traffic. Uh, it's a quieter place. It's definitely a greener place. I've got lots of, although, I mean, Valencia is quite a green city. So even in the center of the city, there's lots of nice open spaces and parks and, um, yeah, parks and, and playgrounds. But where I live, I do have actually much... Uh, a greater variety so that you can you can actually go for long walks and you don't necessarily see uh, buildings and cars and things like that but uh, yeah so I live in the suburbs um, but I am really well connected with the city so I kind of have the best of both worlds I think <laughs> and you're happy where you are yes I am yes I, I, I am Good. and I live in a an, in in a flat uh, but it's 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 nice. We've got a lot of space, and um, and I'm very comfortable here. I've lived here a long time now. I do miss a little bit living in a house because as a as an English girl growing up in a house, <laughs> I used to live in a semi-detached house, and then we lived in a bungalow with gardens, of course. So, yeah. but I've lived abroad for many many years now. So I've lived in France. I've lived in Germany. And as soon as I left England, I had to become accustomed to living in blocks of flats. And I actually quite like it because flats are easy to maintain. You know, you don't have a lot of work doing the garden, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and uh, if the roof, if the roof has a problem all the building, it will get repaired by somebody else. So, you know, living in apartments and in uh, flats, they have advantages, you know. And, and I'm quite a sociable person, so I, I do quite like living around lots of people, as long as they're not too noisy. But yeah, that's, the, that's why I, I don't people. like living in a flat. I don't like our noisy no. neighbours. Marina yes. lives in a flat. She lives in the centre of Roquetes del Mar Armeria in the south uh -huh. of Spain, but she's originally from the countryside of Buenos Aires. Mm. So that's quite a big change, I think, moving from Buenos Aires to Almeria. Uh -huh. Yabba's trying to come in to speak to us. Okay. Can you hear us, Yabba? Hi, yeah. Can you hear me? Hi, Yabba. Yeah, yeah, perfectly. Oh. Thanks thanks for coming in. How are you doing? Uh, that's amazing. I'm really nervous. <laughs> <laughs> it's, only, yeah. it's, only, uh, it's only us. You know us. <laughs> well, this is a live video, and that's why I'm a bit nervous, but 
I'll try to do my best. <laughs> okay. Oh, tell us tell us where you live and and something about where your like your house and what it's like. Okay, well, I live in Morelia, Michoacán, here in Mexico. I don't know if you know me, uh, Morelia. This is the city of the gazpacho, which ah. is a snack made of fruit with uh -huh. groups of uh, for example, pineapple, mango, jicama, watermelon, and they mix it with lemon salt salsa valentina and they add cheese and chili wow, oh, wow. that sounds I've weird never had that. Uh -huh. yeah but this is delicious if you come uh -huh. to mexico you should try this this one this mm -hmm. is delicious and i don't know if you have any question yeah is your city like really busy i mean do you live in a, in a flat in a house what floor do you live on is it, would you like to change anything about where you live well, I live in a, I don't know how to say exactly, fraccionamiento. I don't know if it, this is like a housing subdivision. Uh -huh. I'm not sure. Okay. This is, a, this, this is a, well, I live in a house which is semi-detached. Uh -huh. Outside every house, we have like a small garden uh -huh. and a yard, a backyard. This is a small, a small place here in, in the city. Uh -huh. But I don't know who to say fraccionamiento. I'm not sure oh. if you use it. Is, in it, Spain. it yeah, is it kind of like a group of, of houses? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. A group of houses. A housing estate. Could we say that, Craig? Yeah, probably a housing estate. So it's in the suburbs, right, Yabud? Uh -huh. Yeah, exactly. In the suburbs. It sounds very nice. It sounds very green. Lots of trees and and maybe some countryside and plants around. Or yeah, not. outside every house we have some trees, um, a small piece, I would say, like a small group of grass uh -huh. with some plants, and that's it. And then we have like a space for the car, uh -huh. and that's it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Wonderful. Uh, thank you. And I, my house has two floors. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I live in the first floor. Well, here in America, we say the first floor compared with the Britain English that you said mm -hmm. the ground floor. So, uh -huh. Yeah, because you have the influence of American English, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah because yeah. the English we use here is like American English. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, so right now I'm in the I'm in my room, mm -hmm. and we have three rooms here and one complete uh, bathroom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Do you say complete bathroom as well? Uh, uh, is it connected to your bedroom? No, no, no. A uh, complete bathroom. Sorry. So it's so a separate, mean, a separate bathroom. Uh, but oh. I think what you mean with a complete bathroom is it has a toilet in it, a shower. Yeah, a exactly. Uh -huh. So the toilet isn't separate. But yeah, we don't. We don't actually have a, a word in English to describe that because traditionally in, in England, our bathrooms were all like that. Um, and I think it's only been in, I don't know, the last 30, 40 years that people actually are separating the toilets off. You know, yeah. they if, separate room for the toilet. If it's, it's, you just say bathroom. If it's no. only the toilet, yeah, but you just say toilet. But if it's a toilet and shower or bath or sink, then call it a bathroom. A bathroom, a bathroom can be a toilet and shower. We just say bathroom. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I live next to my sister's room. Mm -hmm. I'm next to the kitchen as well because my house is small. Mm -hmm. But we, I, I love my the place where I live because, as you said, it's really green. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's really you, quiet. What can you see from your window? Oh, I can see the backyard. <laughs> the what? The, the backyard. backyard. The backyard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my, my mother's room is the best one because she has the window next to the garden. Uh -huh. uh, we yeah. Say, she has the window looking out to the garden. Ah, yeah. okay. Yeah. She has the window looking out to the garden, so she's lucky. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> she well, she, she's your mom, so she deserves it, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and that's why I'm in the last place. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, but it's really, really good to talk to you. Thanks so much for coming in and, and joining us. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. That's okay. okay. Come in next week as well. We'll be on next week. So do the same thing next week. It's great to hear from you.
Okay, Good. thank you. And you did Take great. Care. You sounded great in English. Fantastic. Yes, excellent, yeah. excellent. <laughs> We've got some uh, questions that people have been writing. How do you say manthana in English? Well, you could say apple, but I don't think that's what you mean, Ramona, because <laughs> manthana, when you're speaking about streets and houses, you'd say block. Mm -hmm. So you'd say like a, a block, especially in US English and American English where there's more like a grid structure in cities, for example, in New York. So you'd say two blocks from here. Or my apartment building is the third block in the street. So Manthana will be block. Block. Mm -hmm. um, so block full of blocks of flats as well. Exactly. I think people are getting confused because they're thinking block of flat. But in actual flat, uh, a block, a whole block, could be several blocks of flats in the block, in the Manthana. Mm -hmm. What about the part of the city that isn't the centre of the city and isn't the suburbs? Uh -huh. Hmm. It's the city. Yeah. It's the city. If you think of London, for example, the city of London, the center of the city is really quite small. It's where the banks and the offices are and the businesses. But the city of London is, is quite big. And then you go out further and you get to the suburbs. So you've got the city center, then the city, then the suburbs. That's, do you agree with that, Lynn? Yeah, I think so. Uh-huh. And you could say, you can say, I live on the edge of the city. That's possible too, possibly. Yeah. If you want to distinguish that you're not in the city centre, you can say, I live on the edge of the city. Uh -huh. That's possible. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else want to come in and, and say hi and tell us about where you live? Um, Marina says, can I say, for example, the balcony looks onto right the beach? Hmm. It's not quite, Marina. I think she I think wants we... to say, for example, the balcony looks right onto the beach. Yeah. You yeah. could also say looks over the beach. You can look over the look look over the park or look over the beach. You could also uh -huh. say looks uh -huh. onto or looks over the beach. Yeah. So mm -hmm. um, while we're waiting, see if anybody wants to come in before we say goodbye. I'll quickly tell you about my flat so you can hear the vocabulary again. So before you, you didn't guess where I was sitting and the problem with my flat, it's not a problem. Well, one problem is it's really, really small. So there's just one room that's quite big and a bedroom and bathroom. And that's the flat and the hall. Of course, there's a hall that comes down into this area. So this area, which is quite big, is the living room, the dining room and my office. So it's all together which works really well for us because I don't have children. So there are no children running around and it's quite a big space. And this is where I work. This is where I eat. And this is where I relax in the evening. And I live in a suburb of Valencia called uh, Marbarossa, which is near the beach. So my flat actually does look onto the beach. There's a building in the way, so we don't have a nice sea view, but the flat does look onto the beach. And it's quite well connected. There are buses to take us into the city. It takes about 45 minutes. And the amenities are quite good. There are a couple of supermarkets. And, of course, there's, there's a beach to do exercise and walk along the promenade of the beach next to the beach. And there's lots of shops. So it's a nice area. Quite, quite like it. It is. I like you live in a nice place. It's a nice place. Mm-hmm. Except in August when all the tourists come, all the giddies. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Anything else, uh, Craig? Anybody else want to come in and try it? Well, we can wait five minutes to see if anybody wants okay. to follow Yabber and come in and tell us about your um, where you live. All right. Shall I tell them about the, um, the Padlet page? We're trying again. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yes, tell them about the Padlet so, page. So, you know, we, we are keep insisting to try to get you to do some practice and some homework when you when we leave our class. So this week we've created, can you put the link up into the uh, chat room? Or maybe, yeah, can you do that, Craig? I'll put it in the chat room and I'll also try and share my screen and show. All right. So we've made a new Padlet. And this one is a map of the world. And when you make a post here, you can actually say the place. 
and it will automatically put your pin on the map of the world, right? So if you want to do a little bit of practice of the vocabulary that we've done today, there you go, right? And you can see already, we've got a couple of posts. You see these red things, these red things here are posts. One of them you can see is in Spain, because I made that post and I'm telling you, I've got a picture of Valencia, if anybody's interested. And I'm telling you a little bit about why Craig and I think Valencia is nice. I think you agree with me, do you, Craig? I spoke Absolutely. to Absolutely. 100% yeah. Lynn, yeah. Why we like living in, in Valencia. And you'll also see a bit further down the map that I've got another post here, which is the, my, my dream destination. Where would you live if you had all the money in the world? And I've got it very clear where I would like to live. This is my dream destination, my dream house. So if you're interested in reading about where I would really like to live, you can see that it's in Africa, but you'll have to go into the web page and then you can read all about it. And I've got a picture there and I'm telling you all about where I would really like to live. So if any of you would like to practice, remember you just open up that web page and all you have to do is click on the map and um, you can put in the place and you can decide to either make a text message, which is what I've done there. But you can also, if you click on the more button at the bottom, you can actually leave a voice recording or you can even create a video recording of yourself telling us about where you live. And I would really like to know where you, you guys all live. And if you can put pictures in, it would be brilliant. <laughs> so would I, and I'd also like to know where Felipe lives. Can you hear us, Felipe? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, perf perfectly. Hello, welcome. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Where, where do you live? Uh, okay, well, I, I live in Chile. I'm from Chile. Um, wow. I used to live in an apartment, but I just moved moved out to my parents' house since the wow. pandemic. Um, right. I'm working mm -hmm. remotely, so um, there is no problem being here for now. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> What's the difference between living in your parents' house out of the city to where you lived before in the apartment? Are there differences in what you can do? Yes, exactly. Um, I don't know how to say it in English, but um, the apartment I was living before, it's, a, it's, it's an apartment that it's only for one person. It's just, you, you don't have a, any kind of division. It's like the kitchen but not very it's it's not separated by walls it's like the living room is together with the bedroom of course you have the division to the bathroom but it's it's kind uh, it's 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 an area that includes all the all the different rooms in english felipe would say studio apartment a studio apartment yes exactly yeah. that's a kind of a studio apartment but now i'm living with my parents it's it's like a, a regular apartment in chile with all the the bedroom the divisions um and okay what else i can i can say well i have like uh, i live in in a suburb uh, it's like a, um a place where uh, it's we don't have industries or or factories near it's like it's it's close to the center maybe um 20 minutes to to the center by taking the uh, or using the the tube the metro uh, or bus um what mm -hmm. else um so it's quite well connected. Yes, exactly. Yes. Uh, uh, nowadays, okay, I I haven't used any kind of transportation because I'm staying at home. But yeah. yes, it's well connected. Yeah, indeed. And are there lots of good amenities nearby where you live? Yeah, yeah. You you have like uh, the, the the big stores, the supermarkets. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, maybe ten minutes from here, uh, walking by walking, uh, mm -hmm. but. In, in this kind of places, because, well, you have these little stores, these convenience stores, these sea yeah. stores, mm -hmm. but okay, they are quite expensive in this area. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's wonderful. Uh, how, what's the situation in Chile with um, the virus? Is it is it bad at the moment? Uh, okay, it, it, it was getting better, but now we are a kind in, in, we are just uh, having a special situation because we are going to vote about changing the constitution, the some very important laws regarding our our system. So yeah. okay, th they are coming in October, 
So mm -hmm. okay, it, it was getting better, but now uh, they are kind of relaxing the, the 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 rules or the lockdown. So okay, maybe it could be it could get worse, but okay, who knows? It's kind of difficult. Yeah. Well, listen, Felipe, stay safe and be careful, and um, don't don't go outside too much. <laughs> yes, exactly. I just well, I, I like I, I like running, so I, I'm just running uh, during the morning. I yeah I. I wake up early, so maybe I I can I, I I'm able to to run with not too much people outside. But okay, it's it's kind of hard because everyone wants to be outside right now. <laughs> yeah, sure. The lockdown yeah, well, uh, has lasted too long in Chile, uh, or at least in Santiago, the main the main the, the capital, the main city. Yeah, it's la it's yeah. lasted too long everywhere. I think it's anyway. Yeah, exactly. Let's mm. let's hope things get better soon. Hey, thanks a lot for coming in, Philip. It's really good to hear your voice and to and to meet you virtually online. It's wonderful. Thank you. Ah, okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, fantastic. so um, it's, it's so nice because people, the the way we live all around the world, we've got similarities, but there are differences, aren't there, between the way we live in different countries? So it's it's really interesting for me. Yeah. Yeah. So Lynn's told you about the Padlet um, board. I will also put something on there tomorrow um, or the next day, within the next two days. And I'm going to put a place that might surprise you where I actually lived. Oh. And the same as Lynn, I'm going to put a place which is my dream destination if I could go somewhere to live one day where I'd like to live. And remember, you can also record your voice if you don't want to write a text or put pictures, you can just record your voice and put a pin in the map and tell us about where you'd like to live. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. That's Thank perfect. you for being here. Thank you for joining us. It's lovely to, to have you here. And we hope that you enjoyed the, um, the Facebook Live. Yeah. <laughs> Before um, we go, Lynn, do you want to tell them once more about your website? All right. My website is called putitlikethis.com. Um, you can see it at the bottom in the streaming there, put it like this.com. And if anybody's interested in having, I tend to specialize in helping people find their own voice in English. So if you have something specific that you want to do, like Craig mentioned earlier in the program, if you want to prepare for an exam, for example, or if you're a business person and you want to prepare for a special presentation, Maybe you write in English and you need help to improve your writing because you're publishing things in English, academic articles, for example. Or maybe you're actually teachers, because I'm doing a lot of work now with teachers who are having to teach in English through the medium of English, but they're actually not English speakers themselves. They're not native speakers. So those kind, if you have specific uh, projects, I'm the person to contact. So you can contact me through putitlikethis.com. Okay. And Thank if you joined us through Facebook, the Facebook uh, Mansion in Glares page, you probably know that on Mansion in Glares, we have free courses and lots of material to help you with your English. And every week we publish a podcast over at inglespodcast.com that also um, helps you with your English. So check it out. It's free. Why not? And we'll be back again. Uh, well, I'll be back with Lynn in, in two weeks' time. Next week, hopefully, Monica will be here with a different subject and some more vocabulary. So join us again next week. And thanks for being here this week. Yeah, thank you. And stay safe and enjoy your homes, yeah? I'm going to enjoy my living room now. <laughs> stay safe and wear your masks. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. Take bye. care.